Hello, this is Liz Lawless, your host for Wild West Diversity, where we tell the rarely and untold stories of multicultural contributions to the settling of the American Wild West. Each Thursday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, we'll be sharing a historical legend and a living legend. Someone from history and someone living that Western lifestyle today, keeping it alive for the future generation. We hope you'll join us on Thursday. If not, we'll see you on the trail. Hello, this is your host, Liz Lawless for Wild West Diversity, and this is episode 52. So we're just uh, excited today. We're going to be talking uh, Western history. We're going to be talking outlaws, lawmen, uh, buffalo soldiers, uh, just all kinds of things. So my guest today is uh, historian and author Art T. Burton. So Art, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. I'm very glad to be here, Liz. All right. Well, this is My great. Pleasure. So uh, for so many uh, years, you know, I, we've uh, I've heard your name off and on. I know we've had all kinds of mutual friends, Cleo Hearn, obviously, Kevin Woodson, right. I guess, and uh, right. who uh, said, hey, have you talked to that Art Burton? And I said, no, I need to talk to Art Burton. Send me his number. <laughs> and so he did. And uh, so it's great to connect, but uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, were you always a, a cowboy at heart or did you, how did you get into this uh, cowboy Western history stuff? Well, my mother's from Oklahoma and I would travel to Oklahoma as a little kid. And many of my extended family were cowboys who owned land, horses and cattle. And I was always uh, enraptured in, in, in by the whole scene. And then as a little kid, you know, I grew up in the 50s and, and, and such, and the Westerns were real big on television. So me and my buddies would always play cowboys and Indians. And so that was the, the first introduction. And I got interested in trying to read some books when I was very young. And I got my first Western history book when I was 11 years old. Okay. Okay. Well, and there, but there wasn't, wasn't a whole lot about black cowboys, were there? When you were looking, no, there was hardly anything. There was, there was, there was nothing on black cowboys. I think the first book I, I realized was a book called The Black West that came out while I was in college in the nineteen oh. seventies, early nineteen seventies. Right, um, right. So that was so, the first time I noticed. That. But you know, my family, I, when I would go to Oklahoma and see my family cowboy. I realized that they were contemporary cowboys. I just didn't have any information on the historical aspect of African Americans on the Western frontier. Right, right. And so, and that's, that what got you into to writing the books, or or do you, you studied too as a professor and got your uh, degrees in African American studies and things? Exactly. Yeah, my main interest was uh, music. Uh, African Americans in music, but uh, after I got married, I started wondering because I, I did my last two years of high school in Oklahoma. I started wondering what was the uh, black experience on the Western frontier, and uh, somebody gave me the name of Bass Reeves on a family get together one time in Oklahoma, and I said, well, "Let me see what I can find out about him." And that kind of was the thing that kind of snowballed into me writing four books on the African American experience on the Western frontier. Right, right. Okay. And I think we I think we've got the book covers on those. Maybe that's me. I mean, is it me doing the feedback? Sorry about that. Um, so I think we've got the book covers uh for that. And so we can kind of walk through uh each of these books and you can tell us a little bit about uh what the story's about. Obviously, these books are available on Amazon, sure. on Art's website. So the first one, right, was uh Black, yeah, Red, that, and uh, Deadly. Right, Black, Red, and Deadly, Black and Indian Gunfighters of the Indian Territory, which is pre-state Oklahoma. It was 1870 to 1907. And uh, that was, book was inspired by Bass, who has the largest chapter in the book. Bass, uh, in my you know estimation, is the greatest lawman on the Western frontier and possibly the greatest frontier hero in American history. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But the book, for sure. the book includes many outlaws <laughs> and lawmen uh, of, of the, you know, Oklahoma and Indian territories, mm -hmm. where you okay, probably sure. found the majority of, of blacks who were outlaw and lawmen in the Wild West. 
Yeah, and that's and that's great because, like you say, just the people don't know today about the stories. So the more we can expose the stories, the more we can tell these stories and repeat these stories and give people good uh, factual information. Because, as you know, as a historian, a lot of the a lot of license was taken with some of these stories, and so we appreciate that that you took the time and the energy and effort because, you know, it's not easy to write a book. Uh, people say you can write a book in a week. No, but I don't not. believe that. <laughs> and the, so the <laughs> next one was uh, about <laughs> Buffalo soldiers, right? And uh, scouts, I guess. Right, right. Right. There had never been a book that I had seen and still haven't seen one that covered uh, African-American soldiers and scouts on the Western frontier. So black buckskin and blue African American scouts and soldiers on the Western frontier was a, uh, you know, something that I really wanted to do. My father had told me that I had an uncle who went after Pancho Villa in 1916 with the 10th Cav in Mexico. So that uh -huh. was very interesting. But uh, I was real happy to get this book out because there's hardly no information on African American scouts on the Western frontier, other than the right. book I wrote. Yeah, wow. I don't, I don't remember seeing yeah. anything. And, you know, my studies and my 30 years of working with rodeo and black cowboys and black history, um, you know, there's not. You know, right. luckily in Texas, we have a great Buffalo Soldier program that's uh, out of the state uh, park department. It's the only minority program in the state um, that some guys started mm -hmm. from the park department. And so that's kind of spread out. Now they have 18 groups across the state of Texas. I know Oklahoma has some Buffalo Soldier groups, New Mexico. Uh, probably Colorado. So it's, uh, you know, but there's not any real good information. So we appreciate so much this Black Buckside and Blue. You can find that at Amazon. You can find that at Art's website at artburton.com. That's A-R-T-B-U-R-T-O-N.com. Spelling that for those of you who are listening on the podcast. Um, and so what the next thing, I guess, was the full book about Bass Reeves. Is that right? So Right, right. Yeah, when I wrote the first book, a lot of people after it said Bass needed his own book. And so I decided, I knew it was going to be very hard to put together due to the fact that Bass didn't leave me any memoirs. Yeah, you know, given the fact he was a former slave, he never learned to read and write. So I had to go through a, a ton of newspaper articles and look into old books that were written before the turn of the century and, and talking to as many people as I could talk to. And we did uh, get out Black Gun Silver Star. It came out in 2006. And just this past September, there's a revised edition that's just come out with a new chapter added to the book with new information on Bass Reeves. Oh, great. And Bass great. is getting so, a lot of publicity. Yeah. They, they put him in the most recent edition of 80 Days Around the World, produced by BBC. Uh, uh -huh. He was in the movie The Heart of... Uh, the Heart of They Fall on Netflix. And I know Taylor Sheridan and Morgan Freeman are both working on one uh, uh, series uh, to be based on Bass Reeves' life yeah. and legacy. Right, great, great. And they well, Taylor Sheridan is shooting Bass Reeves. Yeah, they mm -hmm. shooting there in Oklahoma? Yeah, I'm just saying, or in Arkansas? No, they're shooting in Texas. They're shooting in Texas. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, we'll uh, we'll be taking a look for right. that. We'll be watching for those things. And um, like you say, it's, uh, you know, he's probably one of the him and Bill Pickett are probably the most well-known guys, you know. And so a lot of the stuff with this show, Wild West Diversity, is all right. about the rarely and untold stories. Because there are so many of these individuals that their stories weren't told. So I really appreciate so much that you've done that, that you've got this great work. And here's Cherokee Bill. And he was a black cowboy yeah, that and was, an Indian that, outlaw. That was my, right. Right. Yeah. Cherokee Bill was actually a cowboy. He worked on the cattle ranches up in the Creek Indian Nation in Indian Territory. And then later he uh, hooked up with some Cherokee outlaws and uh, they traced the bail, uh, trail of outlawry for in 1894 1895 and uh he's everything hollywood tries to make billy the kid up to be kid. right um, yeah he, yeah. he stuck yeah. up trains banks, and stagecoaches yeah. he was a classic outlaw 
Right, right. Okay, and you said it was from Muskogee, right? Territory. I mean, now what we would consider Muskogee, it was Indian territory then, I guess. And no, he was from Fort Gibson. Oh, was okay. His home. Okay. Right. So when Mus Muskogee just crossed the river there, but uh, like you say, that that <laughs> right. was the thing. Close. I mean, they had they had. Uh, you know, they had trains back then that, that carried, uh, you know, they carried gold and they carried military, out, uh, you know, stuff. And they had wagons and wagon trains and all right. those kinds of things. And people, people today, and especially kids, I mean, they kind of have a hard time understanding, you know. When we have the Buffalo Soldiers out, they kind of ask, where'd you sleep last night? And they look at them funny and they go in a bed, <laughs> you know, in a house. And they would say, well, you know, and then they throw a blanket out there on the ground. And they say, well, that's where I slept last night. You know, they're in their uniforms and stuff. And right. kids are just, wow, they just are blown away. They don't know. So so we need to share this information with adults and children. And, and we started our stuff, you know, obviously the rodeo has been going on, but we started writing some books because there wasn't a lot of information and these stories weren't being told. Um, and we did it for kids originally, but we found that adults were just more fascinated and they were like, why don't I know this? Why have I never heard this before? Have you had that experience? Yes, quite a bit. Because uh, most of the things I write about have never been written about or people know very little about it. So, yeah, I get that all the time. Uh, you know, there's all the outlaws I've written about in my first book, Black, Red, and Deadly. Nobody, for the most part, had ever heard of them before. Dick Glass, right. uh, Babe Marty. Uh, it's a lot of the outlaws that were, people had no idea. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, um, and that's the thing, like you say, once we can tell these stories, you know, people can't unlearn it. You know, and and even though we love all the movies right. and we're glad they're doing the movies and we're glad they're telling the stories, you know, sometimes they're taking a little license. And so we have to have these books so that the true factual information is there for people. And hopefully they see the movies and they think they want to know more about the characters and they go look them up, you know, and when they start doing that, you know, hopefully they're going to find your books or they're going to find our book. Or we're going to, they're going to find other people because a few other people are writing. Uh, but not a lot. Robert Miller, right. I guess, you know, Robert Miller up in, the, you know, who did a few of the early children's books uh, a few years ago. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, he, there's another lady out, Tricia Wagner over in North Carolina that wrote about some women, you know, like Mary Fields and, mm -hmm. uh, and the women of the African-American right. women in the West. Uh, but there's not much, you know, and there's still not much today, mm -hmm. even though there's a few more things coming on. So, well, what's your, which one is your favorite? What, <laughs> who's your favorite outlaw? <laughs> and then uh, I know Bass um, is a big favorite, but uh, who's your favorite outlaw? And then who's your favorite Buffalo soldier? Well, Cherokee Bill is probably my favorite outlaw. You know, if I uh -huh. say a favorite outlaw, but my favorite uh -huh. lawman is for sure is Bass Reeves. Uh, right. What he yeah. was able to do. And, um, uh, there was a Sergeant Bivens, Horace Bivens, in the Buffalo Soldiers. He's my favorite Buffalo Soldier. Okay. He okay. was so, Sergeant Bivens was <laughs> so good uh, that Buffalo Bill offered him a job as a sharpshooter in his Wild West show. But Bivens didn't want to leave the Army, so he stayed. But in my book, Black Buckskin and Blue, I talk about Sergeant Horace Bivens. He has a okay. chapter. Okay, great, great, great. Well, and, you know, we... Um, I had some guys like, uh, uh, you know, Emmanuel Stans. We talked about him a little bit. We talked about uh, Henry Flipper, of course, <clears throat> the first uh, West Point graduate, and uh, and Benjamin Brown, because some of our guys down here in Texas portray those characters for us when we go out to rodeos and schools. And, and I know you do a lot of visits, too, don't you, with schools and libraries, museums, things like that, right. sharing this information right. with people. Um, if if somebody, you know, do you have a favorite museum or a favorite location or somewhere where you think people ought to go if they want to know more about uh, about some of this information, some of this history? Well, I, I've never been, but I do know there's a Buffalo Soldier Museum that's supposed to be pretty good in Houston, Texas. I haven't been there yet. Um, the right? Oklahoma right. Historical right. History right. Center in Oklahoma City is, is pretty good uh, for looking at history um there's there's a black west museum in denver colorado 
that's mm -hmm. that's that's very nice uh, museum to cover some of this history. And right. uh, there's a few other right. places around, but uh, always can look, you know have more people take a look at it. I right. know there's a For show sure. right now at the African American <laughs> Museum in Dallas that has a focus on black cowboys. Uh, which right. is very this nice is a right now. A show they did, uh, I guess, put together in San Antonio. The San Antonio uh, Museum, mm -hmm. I mean, put it together and it's traveling. And yeah, it is up here in Dallas through July. So we're very, June, I think. So we're very excited to have that Black Cowboy uh, e exhibition. So it's got photos, it's got some video. So if you happen to be in Dallas, Texas, you want to go to the African American Museum at Fair Park and see this Black Cowboy exhibition, it's it's just great. And uh, we wanted we encourage you to I go should. to Amazon. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I I'll be remiss if I didn't mention the uh, National Multicultural Western Heritage Museum in Fort Worth, Texas. Right. Which well, I'm currently the historian for that museum. Oh, okay. But, um, I did not know they, that. I knew you were been an inductee. I knew you were, uh, and it, you know that you were part of the museum and hall of fame. Uh, but I didn't know you were the historian for that. So that's great. Well, they're smart. <laughs> right. Last fall, yeah, they made me the historian for the museum. Okay, and last great. Week, the last the last Sunday in April, they're going to dedicate their. They have a a, a room that will be dedicated to Bass Reeves in the museum. With all say some some uh, artifacts and the books and things like that, some th information about him. Great. Well, that the National Multicultural Museum and Hall of Fame is in Fort Worth, Texas, so uh, just down the road here from Dallas. So if you live in the North Texas area, you've got two opportunities. You can go over there to the museum in Fort Worth, or you can go to the museum in Dallas and get some western history and get some uh, maybe some culture that you don't know about that you probably really need to know about we hope once you see these shows and read these books from art burton that you'll uh you'll want to know more and that you'll share these books with other people with your friends and families because that's what it's all about it that art it's it's telling these stories so other people can hear them i think we lost <laughs> I think we fell out here for a minute, but he'll be back in just a second. So we're having a little technical difficulty, but uh, we've been talking with author and historian, Professor Art T. Burton. Uh, Art was a professor for many, many years, over 30 years. And he was teaching this African-American history at the uh, college level. At the, and uh, he's written these books about these wonderful uh, real people who live these lives. Some of them were outlaws. Some of them were lawmen. Some of them were Buffalo soldiers in the military. A lot of them were cowboys uh, before and after these other jobs. And so we're so appreciative of that information and these, that these books are available for him. We hope that you'll go to Wild West Diversity to our YouTube channel and subscribe where you can watch this video and you can see all of our other 50 episodes. Uh, with these wonderful living legends who are keeping this Western history alive for future generations because um, there's not a lot. There's not a lot of good information about these different ethnicities, these different cultures who all contributed to the settling of the American Wild West. And so that's why we're here. That's why we're here every Thursday at uh, 5 p.m. telling you these stories. Um, bringing these people on who are keeping the, the lifestyle alive. I'm so glad today that we're sharing some of these historical characters, Will G, Cherokee Bill, obviously Bass Reeves we've talked about before. Um, Horace, I had not known, I did not, Bevins, I did not know his name. So I am glad to know about him and I'm going to go back and uh, be reading Art's book uh, about that, about uh, the buckskin and blue and <laughs> And so we just appreciate the uh, the books that he has and, uh, and his dedication uh, for all these years of teaching Western history, uh, not only at the college level, but then sharing this history with people and museums and bookstores. And so we lost you there for a minute, but now we're back. Yeah, now we're back, right. 
So I was just sharing that, uh, you know, that I, these are some of these characters I didn't know myself, you know, and so I really appreciate that you've spent these years, you've been teaching this uh, history before you started writing, and now you're writing this history and, uh, you know, working. Um, have you got some, some stuff coming up? I know in addition to your author stuff, you have a little music, I think, don't you? You still, uh, uh, still doing those, yeah, uh, the bongo and drums and other right. stuff yeah right i have a, a new cd be coming out jazz cd be coming out this year and i've uh, made two cds and i've played play here in chicago with an association for creative musicians which is a musical collective here in chicago illinois which i've been right. doing since 1970. so yeah i'm okay. very involved with the music and that's at art turk so. burton right a r t Right. dot com. So you can find Art's music at artturkburton.com. He's got some jazz CDs there and some music available and there's some other stuff coming out. Well, well, that's just great. And then we talked earlier, our producer, he was a drummer. He was a professional musician and he, he toured all around the country and playing the drums with, a, I think he was more of a rock and roll guy, but... <laughs> <laughs> you might have been more of a rock star than a jazz okay. star, but but uh, but yeah, but we love yeah. jazz, and that and that's a whole part of the culture too, isn't it? I mean that, it, and music is uh, right. music is one of those things that breaks down barriers for us. I think like art and uh, sports, and you know, they're just things, and you know, we we need to know these stories about our different cultures. Because we, when we hear these stories, we find out we have a lot more in common than we know, don't you think? That's true. That's true. Yeah, that's that's right, Liz. We, it's a lot we have in common. Right, yeah. and you know, we get so caught up in the differences that you mm -hmm. know sometimes we forget, you know, how much we have in common. And yeah. um, and I think when we right. know this collective history, you know, with different cultures, you know. Uh, participated and so when we can share these stories that people don't know um, I think it just you know it opens their mind it opens the opportunity for at least conversation if, if nothing right. else um, what did what did you find was I guess what was the biggest struggle um, as you've been teaching this all these years and then what maybe was your biggest surprise you know or what's what's the thing that you um, or so or as so pleased about her that you're especially pleased uh, to share. Well, looking at, looking at the life of Bass Reeves, I was really surprised at how extensive his career was and all the accomplishments he had. That was quite uh, a, a surprising for me. And I'm really happy that a lot of people around the world are embracing his, his legacy and, mm -hmm. and his accomplishments as a peace officer on the Western frontier. Because so he had what about three thousand, uh, like three thousand convictions or three thousand guys he brought in. But he, he, as you mentioned, he couldn't read and write, could he? No, he couldn't. He would memorize his warrants. He had great memory, and so he had people read the warrants off to him, and he would memorize them. And there wasn't any pictures, you know, in Hollywood they showed the warrants right. with the pictures. They actually did have pictures on warrants back in those days. So he would memorize uh, what they look like because, you know, uh, they would be descriptions of what people look like. Yeah, height, hair color. Locate them. <laughs> right. If they had scars or anything like that on their on their body or any information, mm -hmm. he, he would use that also. But uh, he carried as many as 30 warrants at a time, and he would be able to put a specific warrant if you ask for it, he, his recall would be that great. Oh wow, wow! Oh, and he wow. did—he wow. he did dress in costume, didn't he? He right. He dressed in disguise all the time. That was part of his <laughs> modus operandi was to, to disguise himself. So he disguised right. himself as a farmer, as a cowboy, as a preacher, as a hobo, or whatever he had to do to get next to the outlaws he wanted to catch. Right, right. And then he'd catch them and bring them back. Do I understand this right? That even at one point he brought his son in? Right. He arrested his son for murder and he arrested the minister that baptized him <laughs> for selling liquor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. 
Yeah, so so justice was his main value, and like you say, he, he you know once he committed to being a lawman, you know he he was committed to that, and he he kept the peace, and he you know he went out and served these warrants and captured these outlaws and brought them back to uh, the court, and I, I guess they had what court out of Arkansas because it was ter territory at the end, so they didn't really have. Uh, I guess they still had courts yeah. and judges, but it wasn't like today. Yeah, initially, his, he worked out the Fort Smith, Arkansas court from 1875 up to 1893. Then in 93, he worked out of the Paris, Texas court till 1897. And then they did put the courts in the Indian Territory. And, and from 97 to 1907, he worked for the Muscogee uh, a federal court, which was in the Creek Nation in the Indian Territory. Right, right, yeah. So, and then, and he ended up staying the rest of his life there in Muskogee, didn't he? And serving, I think he uh, right. he's, after he quit chasing yeah, outlaws. That's, that's, he... <laughs> right. Well, at statehood in 1907, he got a job uh, and as a city policeman in Muskogee. So he he held that for okay. almost two years. Okay. So and he oh, liked yeah. to brag about the fact that. He, he said there was never a crime on his beat. So, you know, that was interesting. They gave him right. a beat downtown Muskogee. But he was right. around 68 years old at that time. Right, right. So he yeah, yeah so he was a lawman even there after he quit chasing them across the territory at, locally there at the uh in Muskogee and uh, Oklahoma. And so, right. you know, all these great uh, characters, all these great the real people that lived their lives. You know, he had family, he had other kids, but, you know, this was his job. And so he went out and did his job. And uh, Art talked about, you know, the Buffalo Soldiers, you know, they served because they got land. Is that right? After they served so many years. And um, a lot of those Buffalo Soldiers had been free no, slaves after the Civil War. Or how did that work? They only got land if they uh, homesteaded on land like any other uh, homesteader. Oh, they didn't okay. get free land for being a Buffalo soldier. Oh, okay. They got retirement okay. uh, sometime. You know, they would get uh, that consideration, uh, but they didn't get free land. But they got land, you know, they would apply for it as a homesteader. And so oh, okay. quite a few okay. of them stayed in, in, in Oklahoma or Nebraska or Texas or Colorado. Um, I know it's quite a few of them stayed in Oklahoma. Of that. Right, for but sure. Was, and then in, yeah. in uh, New Mexico, and like you say, in, in Kansas and Colorado, because I know uh, right. uh, some of our guys were over there, and uh, and there, some of them were just now, you know, in recent years, have we gotten, uh, you know, basically found their graves or put, you know, had their cemetery, their graves at cemeteries, you know, with uh, tombstones and right. with the actual. Um, historical markers and things like that. So I know our Buffalo Soldier Group has worked with that. I know they've gone over to New Mexico and and done similar things. And and Kathy Williams, uh, you know, the only female Buffalo Soldier, she was, you know, she ended up in New Mexico and uh, and uh, the Arizona kind of back and forth there, but finally, you know, mustered out over there <laughs> when they found out. I think that she right. was a woman. So. Uh, well, do you have yeah, my, anything my, new? My, well, I, I was just going to say my favorite group in, in Texas is the Seminole Negro Indian Scouts that served with the U.S. Army on the Texas frontier. And they yeah. were like the Green Beret of the U.S. Army on the Western frontier. Interesting group. The Sem and they, I talk about them in my second book, Black, Buckskin, and Blue. Right. Okay. Great. Yeah. So those are some more of the Seminole Indian Scouts because they were down, especially uh, I know down by um, uh, Eagle Pass and in Southern Texas, especially because uh, those were some of the port cities. Those were the the crossing between Mexico and Texas, and a lot of those Seminole uh, Scouts uh, lived down there and then ended up living there and. Uh, we have a story about Joanna July. Her father was a uh, was an Indian scout, and he worked for the military and the army and broke horses. And then he passed away, and her brother had gone to Chicago or New York or somewhere because he didn't want to be a cowboy. And 
she ended up taking over and training those horses for the military. And that's how she was able to survive and live, you know, which was very unusual right, right. Uh, at the time. Right. But uh, so we have some of those stories. So I'm glad to see that, that we can find, you can find those other stories about Indian scouts and arts books. We hope you'll go take a look at those. They're available on Amazon. They're available on his website. Um, have you got any books coming up or you got uh, something you're just working on the music for right now? And now I'm, I'm working on some articles for True West magazine, um, uh -huh. which will come out in the near future. And I'm, I'm a, uh, working on a book on Muskogee uh, when it was a frontier town in the Indian Territory. All right. Well, great. We'll see. Our, our 30 minutes are up. I can't believe it goes so fast. But uh but we'll uh, we'll have to have you come back and and talk some more and uh, maybe we'll do a thing on just on the music stuff. But we want you to go check art right. out at artburton.com or at amazon.com. Is there one last thing you want to share with the audience, Art? That uh, if somebody's interested in Western history, you know, how can they get started in finding out more about this besides uh, going and buying your books? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Well, I think it's it's good to read. There's there's the movies aren't good in terms of giving you a flavor for the history. So the best thing I would advise is get some good uh, history books on the West and uh, read those. Uh, if it's not my book, read some other books, but try to read some historical, uh, factual books on the Western frontier. Right. Then you'll know the difference. And like you say, you can appreciate the movies. You can appreciate that they took a little imagination and license. We're just glad they mentioned these, uh, the names of these people who actually did live real lives. And so go check that out. But we appreciate so much. This has been episode uh, 52. We've been talking with author and historian Art T. Burton. Go check art stuff out uh, at artburton.com or on Amazon. Uh, and you can find his books there. And so we appreciate y'all so much. Uh, this has been Liz Lawless, your host for Wild West Diversity. We're here every Thursday at 5 p.m. So come back and see us next week. Thanks, Art. Appreciate you so much. All right. Happy trails. Hello, this is Liz Lawless, your host for Wild West Diversity, where we tell the rarely and untold stories of multicultural contributions to the settling of the American Wild West. Each Thursday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time, we'll be sharing a historical legend and a living legend. Someone from history and someone living that Western lifestyle today, keeping it alive for the future generation. We hope you'll join us on Thursday. If not, we'll see you on the 